Hi guys, I'm back. I'm going to start with summer. I don't know why I have been dying to color this one since I sketched it out. I'm more of a fall person, but this one just kind of uh, um, has had me kind of waiting for it. <laughs> I had myself waiting for it. All right, so let's start with our flesh. I'll put the colors on here. There's something under there. There we go. All right. Can you all see me? Not that I can hear you, but you know. <laughs> all right. Okay, that's going to be in my way, so let's move it. Oh, my lighting's kind of funny. Let's see if I can adjust it. It's like too much shadow or something. Um, okay, hopefully that will kind of fix it. Okay, so E21, I'm going to go into my favorite beginner areas, which are the cheeks, areas where I kind of want my shadow to be the most shadowy. <laughs> it's a technical term. I just printed these off. I'm hoping that the ink's not going to bleed too much. But I'm going to go over the darkest areas just slightly with my pen to avoid that smearing or smudging. These should go fairly quickly for me because they're only half half images torso but that hair that I add onto them sometimes just takes a while I know it's a lot of hair and it's smudging really bad because I just printed them <laughs> I did not heat set them so hopefully it won't do it as much or as bad I just have to be careful Okay, so that's E21. Now I'm going to go in with my e E11. Again, over those same areas, but not covering the entire E21 area. And those smudges are really going to bug me. So, sadly, once I'm done coloring her, I will probably toss her. Okay. Now my E51. And because that ink is really smudging, and I'm almost positive that it's because I just printed them off and they just haven't had time to dry, I'm going to be really, really careful around those dark areas. Or <clears throat> not dark areas, but like, um, you know, the areas that has the, more, the most ink. Like the eyelashes, they tend to smudge a lot because it's very saturated with ink in that area. So I just want to go over it carefully and lightly.
back in with my E21 on certain areas. I'm not going to do on all of them, but some of the more important areas. I almost want to start over because of that black smudge right there. But I won't. Now I'm blending it out with my um, E51 again. I'm going to stop right there because it keeps smudging. It's just driving me nuts. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my BV20. And just kind of outline those little areas that I want there to be the most um, shadow. <laughs> one so or saturated or over inked or the ink is still wet and it's just because I'm causing all kinds of problems I see an area here that I didn't blend out with my E51 I'll just go in there real quick and fix it That looks terrible. It looks like, um, well, it looks like it juiced up and then it just, it, it just didn't cooperate there. I think that's what happened with, um, yours, Teresa Jones, on her face. It oversaturated. There was, um, residue. I'm not sure, but unfortunately it just happened to mine. So I know how frustrating that can be. Looks like my pens are just kind of juicing or something. I'm having to blend out a couple areas more than usual. All right. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. So there's her skin. I'm going to start with her, with her top. And I'm going to go with a red. I'm going to start with my R05 and I'm going to leave some areas untouched and we'll go back in there and blend them out. Next is my zero, R08. Zero R39. I'm 
with the polka dots. Unfortunately, I know that I'm going to cover up some of them and, you know, my red's going to run into them and whatnot, but that is um, what I use the Copic White a lot for as well, with little small polka dot areas like this. And I will demonstrate it. <laughs> okay, now with my R02, I'm going to blend out those reds. I'm going to grab from the darkest and in a circular motion just kind of bring all those colors together and hit those areas that I left untouched. Let's see. There we go. Okay. And as you can see, I did cover those polka dots. I didn't want to, of course, but I will go in with my Copic White and fix those. And I'll fix them at the end just because they have to sit and dry and I don't want to be coloring and then smudging them everywhere. I'm going to do the same colors on the lips, starting with the R05. Then my R08. R39. Blend it out with the R02. And on her lips, I'm going to go over it with my colorless blender. Just in that little area, I kind of left um, more open. There we go. I got a little red underneath her lips, so I'm going to try and push that red in. It's not a lot of red, so I'm hoping it's going to work and not smear. As I've mentioned before, R is the most difficult color to move around without it bleeding. Okay. Alright, next I'm going to do her board and the flowers. Now for the board, I want it to be two different colors. The top, I want it to be white. So all I'm going to do is outline that board a little bit with my, I'm going to start with my C1. And I want some of the flowers to be white. So again, C1. And just kind of outlining and creating um, some pleats. I guess we can call them pleats. I'm really just liking <laughs> bleeding right now. It's almost bleeding everywhere I touch. Like I've said before, sometimes the ink printing and coloring right away will cause um, the ink to bleed when you start using your markers, and sometimes it doesn't. 
it doesn't all the time for me. It, you know, rarely does it actually. So I, I thought I was safe and today it's just kind of bleeding and smudging and smearing. So unfortunately that's just kind of a hit and miss. All right, next I'm gonna take my C3 and outline those areas as well, but not all of them or not go over the entire C1 line. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to blend those two colors out with my C00. And I'm going to grab them, you know, from the lightest to the darkest, and I'm just going to blend. Just make circular motions. Mm -hmm. Blend them out. So you get rid of that harsh line that I always talk about. All right. So that's the white area. Okay, now let's do that middle flower. Hmm. Let's go with an orange. Let's see, I'll start with uh, YR12. Oh, and I'm going to sit here and beg that it doesn't, yeah, it bled. It's just not liking me today. Next, uh, YR16. And you will notice I did skip the YR14. Usually I go, when I do my family trio, or my trio of colors, I tend to keep them 
you know, in, in numerical order. It started with the YR12, I would go to 14, 16, and 18 next. But I find that the 14 is a little too orangey. And I'm trying to make this look a little more subtle, less um, like an actual orange, more of a flowery thing. So I skipped the YR14. And this is just looking terrible to me because of the smudging of the ink. It's trying to kind of make me mad. I want to stop and just kind of trash it, but I, I've come so far already. I'm trying to be less harsh on myself and be less uh, anal <laughs> and just kind of let things be sometimes. I'm trying. Look at that ugly black. What a shame. Okay. Okay, next I'm going to go in with my YR18. Now I'm going to add a little bit of E09 just to darken those areas, the inside of the flower, give it even more depth and more um, definition. And only about two, not two strokes, yeah I guess two lines, two strokes, whatever you want to call them, right there. With the other ones, of course, I do quite a bit of strokes. This one I just kind of left like that. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to go back in and blend out that YR12 again, covering up all that white area that I left untouched. as well as blend out the E0, what was it that I said? The E9, Y, R18 and 16 with a couple of the, with a couple strokes using the YR12 to bring out those colors. And kind of blend those colors together. Now with my colorless blender, I'm going to touch up those edges just a little bit, just kind of to lighten them a bit, really carefully, really softly. I just think it adds a little bit more to it. And that's the flower. And I'm going to do the rest of the board. I'm going to start with um, B00.
B02 is my next color. B04, if I can find it. Now, before that sets too much, I'm going to start blending it out, going backwards. B06, now, oh, sorry, 4, now B02. And just um, retouch the B02 areas and merge it with the B04. I keep wanting to say 6. Okay. So next, B00, and then with the B00 I grab from the darkest, which is the B04, start merging with the B02, and then the B01, of course. And I go over all of it with my B02, sorry, B00. Needs a little bit of work there, so back in with my B02. B00 one more time. little white streak untouched just because it makes it look like a really defined shine. Okay. Now with my colorless blender I'm going to go over that white line. This, oh, dang it. And it had a little bit of that orange. Okay. Just not doing good today ladies and gentlemen. Go over the entire area with my colorless blender. It just helps the colors blend together. There we go. So the board's done. Now I'm going to do the sunglasses. I'm going to start with W3. I kind of made squiggly lines there.
W5. W7. Has anybody called out bingo yet? Now backwards, W7, so now W5 again. And instead of the W3, I'm going to go with W and two zeros to blend out. My W is on her shades. Too happy with the outcome of the shades. <laughs> so I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna go ahead and cover them all. Oops. Cover them all. Um, so W3. W5. Seven back with the three, spread it out, and mesh it and blend it together just like that. And now we'll go with the Copic White. <clears throat> I have the little bottle. And I like it because it's got a very fine tip. But it kind of goops up. Let's see if I can get... Where are you? There. So when I have it like this, I will put all that goop on my paper. There we go, until I have my fine tip again. And then I'll pick up some of that extra juicy goop and add my little shine lines. Oops, there we go. There we go. See? Nice and simple. Um, I think I'm safe to do the polka dots now. The hair is next, but I'm going to risk it. Same thing. Just, uh, yeah, let me see if I can get closer. Just color in those polka dots with your Copic White. And it'll take care of all those boo-boos. Mm 
And it's very difficult sometimes to um, control this little brush or the tiny little fine nib. So you might want to use a stylus for your polka dots if you're going to do polka dots. I just kind of dab. My own things aren't cooperating with me today. I apologize. It's like the tip or something. There are a couple of brush hairs that are longer. So it's not quite cooperating today. I might have to trim it down later. The brush. I guess that's as good as it's going to get for today. There we go. Not the greatest, but it'll do. Oops. All right, while that dries just a little bit, I'm gonna do her makeup. I'm gonna go with black shadow. So I'm starting with my W3. I guess I use a lot of black shadow on my images because I do a lot of black eyeshadow, the smoky look. That's what I'm kind of trying to go for here. W5. And 7. W5 again. And blend it out with the W3. And there we go. Again, while that little Copic is still kind of drying, I'm going to do her eyes. I'm going to use the same colors as the board. So we'll start with the B00. B02 and B04 Okay, now with my B and three zeros, I'm going to mix and blend those colors. Grabbing from the darkest, bringing it over to the lightest. Mm. There we go. Not bad. Okay, now I'm going to do her hair and I'm going to go with a blonde. Blue eyes, summer, California, blonde girls, right? So we're going to start with my Y15. And I hope this doesn't smudge and smear that ink too much.
Have you guys ever noticed that on your pens? Like that uncolored spot right there. It's so weird. I don't know why mine keep doing that. And I've cleaned this one out, changed the nib, and it just keeps doing it. Sometimes it um, juices up the marker to where I can't work with it, and sometimes it doesn't. Luckily today it's doing okay, thank goodness. So if anybody knows why it's doing that, let me know. I'm coloring like really nervously just because each time that I um, come close to the line art I feel that the ink is going to smudge. I'm trying not to ruin her. My next color is the Y19, and again, I am jumping ships here. Really big leap. Well, no, not really, because the next one would be 17, so it's not a big, big leap. 17, 18, not bad. And again, I did say that, right? Y19? <laughs> if I didn't, I did now. And this is one of my favorite color combos for the blondes. It kind of gives it a not too blonde, like not too platinum blonde, more of a golden blonde kind of look to me anyway. Now this marker, I have had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. I just changed the nib yesterday because I knew I was going to, going to be using it and it's already drying out. Um, I changed the nib a couple times, at least four times actually on this, and each time it completely dries out. It dried out so bad that I thought that I was going to have to crack open the actual 
barrel to get the nib out, this part right here. The nib just would not go, it was completely dry and just kind of caked on there or something. It was just the strangest thing. And I'm not sure why it's doing it and it's just this particular one. I might actually have to just buy a new um, Y19. Maybe the barrel was wrong or the caps aren't getting on there correctly. I, I don't know. But it's driving me nuts. It is complete. It's like drying out on me right now. I can feel it. No. Where's that dramatic picture that I posted? It's just terrible. I'm struggling to lay down those lines with this color. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I, I changed out the nib at least four times because each time that I would do it, when I would go to use it the next time, um, and usually I will change the nibs out, let it set, so I will use it like the next day. So I tend to clean the nibs and change them out the day before I'm going to use them. By the time the next day came around and I had just re-inked it and changed the nib out, it was doing this again, and it keeps doing it. So I think I'm going to just have to go ahead and grab myself a new Y19. This one's just giving me grief. I think I remember too um, Wendy Billings when she was here for a retreat it kept ha it happened to her uh, Y19 as well so I'm wondering if it's not the pigment in that particular color or in this particular color. So I will put this one down and grab it at another moment. I'm going to have to change the nib out again. All right. So now I'm going to go in with my YR14. I like to use this one with my blonde combination. I just kind of feel, sorry, YR24. And it gives it a brown look, but at the same time golden. So it's the last color I use on this combo. Of course, because the other one juiced up so bad, this is not going to cooperate with me today. Ew, it's looking horrible. I may have I may have to color her again. But we'll see because I want to try to color all of the seasons and do a video on them all. I really enjoyed drawing those out. And I'm enjoying this summery one because I'm not a big summer person as I mentioned. So I'm kind of liking the bright colors. No gothic elements to her either. <laughs> what is wrong with me, huh? I must be coming down with something. No goth, no skulls. That's so unlike me. Okay, well, this is juicing bad, and it's now because of the Y19 that just kind of ruined it all. I'm not letting the other colors cooperate. So, I'm going to call her hair done. I just went outside the line, so I'm going to fix that on the eyebrow with my E51. And I'm going to show you how to do freckles. I said to... Alice that I would do a quickie on it and I think this is a perfect image to do so. So let's do some freckles. Okay. So she's basically done. I'm happy with her other than the juicy parts. She looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to close up on her face. Oh, wrong way. 
Okay. And we're going to do some freckles. Now, <laughs> that Y19 speckled or spat or something, and I've already got a freckle on there. Lovely, huh? So let's start with um, E23. And basically just go in and create a couple of dots here and there. Nose, big ones, small ones, all kinds of ones, right? That was E21. We're going to jump to E31. Same thing, only you make them just a little chunkier this time. Kind of bring down your marker a little bit, a little bit more. Apply more pressure. Now I'm going to do E08. Very light ones. Alright. Now with my E51, I'm going to dot them again. Or dab them. Just to spread out the color and make it look a little more natural. E23 again. E30 is next. Just so I can wash out some of those colors and at the same time add a little bit of a tone to it. And there you have it. It doesn't look great right now because it's still drying. Um, but it's all a matter of working with it and kind of blending it out to your liking. I'm going to blend it out a little bit more with my E50. I can't locate it. E50. I used to use E51 and E50 for my skin all the time together. And then I realized I really don't need the E50 too much. It just lightens it. So I will sometimes use it when I do freckles, just so it lightens that area, the freckle area. I don't go beyond that point with it. There we go. And that's it. She's done. Oh. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I will be doing the next three seasons and the militaries. And I've got some other stuff coming up as well um, for the end of the month that I'm going to record for you guys. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you.